Welcome back, DP Review TV viewers. Chris Nichols here for DP Review and full disclosure. Uh. Suck! <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> Get it right in one take. I like nice Jared better. Go back to pretending to be somebody you're not. Still rolling. <laughs> Welcome back, DP Review TV viewers. It's Chris Nichols here for DP Review TV. And uh, we can see we're in sunny California. Beautiful. We got San Francisco behind us. You can see the Bay Bridge just barely through the clouds there. And so, of course, full disclosure, we don't live here. Sony has been kind enough to fly us out here, put us up for the release of their brand new lens. And that's what we're looking at today. We've got the brand new Sony G Master 24mm 1.4. Now, this is a very compact, very light lens. It makes it eight in their lineup of G Master and brings their full FE lens line up to 30 units. In fact, a 24 mil is definitely one of my go-to focal lengths to play with, especially if I can only take one prime. It's very compact, it's very lightweight. We're gonna talk about that more. And of course, it's fast at 1.4. And it promises to be a very good lens optically. Of course, we're gonna test that. And I also wanna say that we have a full production lens here, so we can test it fully. And we're gonna get one back to the lab's deep review. Look there, because you're gonna see a lot more testing to come. Jordan is also gonna shoot the video today on a 24mm 1.4G Master as well. So with that in mind, we're going to head to the Muir Woods. There should be some beautiful landscapes to shoot up there. Uh, just going to have fun with that, you know, playful perspective, push those wide angle compositions, and uh, we'll see what we get here. I'm excited. So we're out here in the Muir Woods just outside of San Francisco and carrying the 24mm G Master, the first thing that I notice, it's incredibly compact and lightweight compared to the competition out there. Almost 200 grams lighter than some of the other lenses. It's got a 67mm filter thread, so it's smaller diameter all around. And really for carrying it around in a place like this, it is a joy, honestly, it's a big plus. And it's just in stark contrast to what we normally see out of the G Masters. Normally they're very large, very heavy lenses, and this lens is quite a different kind of aesthetic. On top of that, you do have the custom button here that you can customize on the side. The iris is right on the lens, and of course you can make that clickable or silent as you see fit. So overall, really interesting departure from what they normally do with G Masters. Okay, so a couple apologies. We're on the bus, I'm sorry for that. I know it's jarring because we were just in the woods, uh, but you know, we had very little time to shoot. We got out there, we had to get some photos, and we had to run back. We were still 10 minutes late. That's just sometimes the way it works on these press trips. So it's noisy in here, the exposure's gonna change. Gordon Lang's probably gonna make too much noise back there from Camera Lab, so hopefully he shuts up a bit. So first off, did a lot of sun stars because we had that light coming through the trees and the lens did a very nice job of that. Nice dramatic look as you guys can see here. Okay, now let's talk about close focusing capability here because I do like wide angles. To get up close, as you can see here, it pushes the background far away and it gives it a nice separation. We're looking at 0.24 meters as our minimum close focusing capability. Sony advertises a 0.17 magnification factor. I like the results I was getting. And one thing I will say, like most G Masters, you're getting a very circular aperture, 11 blades on this particular lens. So although it's just an initial look, I did find the bouquet very pleasing. Minimal onion rings, nice soft backgrounds as you can see here, and a beautiful transition to the fall off. So again, something we expected to see, but something we're happy to see in this lens. All right, so we've just passed by the famous San Francisco AT&T ballpark and we're heading out to the docks to do a sunset cruise here out in the bay and uh, Drew just wants me to point out of course he's doing a walk and talk right now this 24 mil G master is not image stabilized in any way so we're shooting on a7r3s we've got ibis but if you happen to be using a body that doesn't have that just keep that in mind all right so we're coming to you now from the USS Potomac Franklin Delano Roosevelt's uh, floating White House but more importantly we got Gordon Lang with us and even more importantly we've got beer
Hey everyone, it's Jordan to talk about using the 2414 for video. And 24 millimeters is a really important focal length for me. I use it all the time whenever I'm going to be moving the camera in a shot. And this has some nice features for that. The biggest one for me is this has linear response when you're using the manual focus on it. So no matter how fast you turn the lens, as long as you go from one point to another, you're going to wind up at the same focus distance. It makes doing focus pulls very doable. On top of that, if you pull focus like that, you'll find the breathing with the lens is very minimal. You're not going to see your frame zooming a lot while you pull focus from one subject to the other. On top of that, they give you the option to turn the click off. So not only is it silent, which is really important for the built-in mic, but you can smoothly shift your exposure. So it's actually a lot of video features that are really well thought out for this lens. That being said, I would still maybe look at a 2414 from Sigma because we're getting a real manual focus ring with that. But if you're going to use it for photo and video and you want something small and light, this is a killer lens. All right, so that brings our time in San Francisco to an end. And I do have to say it was a very short amount of time. We only had one short day to play with this lens and there's only so much that we can test given that short amount of time. So please keep that in mind. But here's my main takeaways from playing with this lens for this day. So first off, it is incredibly lightweight and compact, very small, very portable, and this puts it at stark contrast to the larger Sigma 24mm 1.4 uh, E-mount, which is gonna be its closest competition. I have looked at the files. Here's what I wanna say about that. First off, this lens does seem to be very sharp. Resolution is very high, even wide open. It looks quite impressive. Looking at the files on the computer when shooting straight into the sun, there is a very complex element and group formula here in this lens design and we are getting a fair amount of flare. In some cases it was somewhat obnoxious so I do want to just get that out of the way. Sagittal flare on the other hand, shooting low light stuff, points of light, the new design has handled that very well and that's something that Sony really did market this lens to be. I mean, if you are gonna use this lens for astral photography, low light nighttime photography, and shoot wide open a lot, I think you're gonna really enjoy the lens design here. It does excel at that. Although, in my personal opinion, I do feel for astral photography, I like having something a little bit wider than a 24 mil. That being said, as a, as a one, stop prime wide angle lens 24 would still be my choice if you're going to go traveling and tackle a whole bunch of stuff and as a travel lens this lens does excel the sigma 24 millimeter art i mean that's really the closest competition here optically i i think i might give the edge to the g master they're very close but the cost on the sigma is way less so i think it's really going to come down to this do you need maximum weight and space savings if so the Sony might be worth the extra money. It is that small. You know, I think the best thing to do is go to deepreview.com. They've also got the lens and they're testing extensively. You can play with my raw files that you can find there as well. See for yourself what kind of results you're getting in this lens. My takeaway is I actually found it to be a very enjoyable, very easy to use lens. And if you're willing to pay the price, you're gonna get something that's very compact for travel. Otherwise, hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget, leave us comments below. Subscribe to the channel, please. Go check out our Instagram feeds. You can see a lot of the photos that we've taken here. And uh, let us know what you think about this new product. It's another exciting G Master lens. I think they did a pretty good job. Otherwise, we're gonna come back to you guys shortly with a lot more reviews. Thanks so much.